Welcome back to the Ricina Dialogue 2021. As has been our effort through this dialogue, we have been trying to bring together some of the most influential thinkers, impactful leaders to talk to our audiences. And today I'm joined by His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani, who's the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Deputy Prime Minister of Qatar. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed, welcome to the Ricina Dialogue and Ramadan Kareem. Thank you, thank you very much, Samir, for hosting me today. So, uh, Sheikh Mohammed, let me start by asking you, uh, how has Qatar responded to the pandemic? You are a global center. You, you, your existence is a manifestation of globalization itself. Now, once you stop travel, once you stop tourism, once businesses slow down, how does a, a, a global center like Qatar respond? Well, uh, definitely, uh, as you know, as a pandemic impacted the whole world, Qatar was uh, as part of the world. We've been impacted with the, with the pandemic. We made sure that we have the minimum negative impact uh, from uh, from this pandemic. Uh, what uh, for us uh, the first priority was to making sure that our healthcare system is resilient. And in order to uh, have like enough beds, enough uh, ICU, enough uh, team that can take care of, of any uh, infected people, in order to ensure uh, the continuity of, of the services in, in, in the entire country. So uh, last year when the pandemic started, we have, uh, we have made our plans that uh, to make some field hospitals to ensure to accommodate that uh, anyone who will be infected can be uh, hospitalized there. Uh, we wanted to ensure that there is uh, uh, the maximum care we can provide by our uh, healthcare uh, team uh, to the people. And uh, thanks God, you know, with, uh, with all what uh, we have seen, uh, Qatar has uh, a result as the minimum uh, fatality rate in, in, in the world. And uh, this is due to uh, making sure that we are not uh, overloading our, our hospital uh, system, our, our healthcare system, and making sure that we always have a room and we have uh, enough spaces to hospitalize people. And also uh, moving forward by testing in advance and taking random uh, samples from different uh, communities. Uh, this is uh, actually remain a challenge until now, uh, but uh, I'm sure that all the countries last year when they responded to the pandemic, when it was something new, this year has responded differently because they have learned from any uh, of the mistakes that have been committed. Uh, what is uh, good about uh, our story that we didn't take like an extreme measure of lockdowns, Yet we made sure that uh, we are taking an extreme measures in social distancing and uh, making the people uh, wearing masks mandatory, uh, having a strict rules for for uh, for public places, for for public gatherings. And uh, this uh, made us, you know, uh, maintaining the number and also uh, those random test samples, it's uh, giving us an opportunity to isolate the people who are infected from the people uh, who are not. Uh, we have done uh, some packages uh, to stimulate the economy. Last year, uh, we have started with a package of 20 billion uh, uh, US dollar uh, for uh, like soft loans, uh, some interest free loans, some of the fees uh, like uh, power uh, energy fees, etc. It's been uh, waived uh, on, on the businesses and also we are reviewing this every six months. So uh, whenever uh, there is a need for such a package, uh, we do so. Uh, um, I also, I think one of the important elements that uh, Qatar uh, made its commitment to the world and uh, like, uh, for example, uh, as you mentioned, Qatar is, uh, you know, at the center of globalization. When you are talking, like, for example, on on Hamad International Airport, remained open for for travelers uh, who wants to transit. Qatar Airways uh, has participated very active in in uh, repatriation of different uh, citizens from different uh, countries, and also we extended uh, our support, uh, especially on the first day when uh, on the first days when we had. Uh, those issues in providing like ventilators, uh, masks, etc. Uh, and there was a shortage in the market. Uh, Qatar has extended its support 
to uh, almost more than 50 countries and uh, we have participated actively in, in, in the Gavi initiative for the vaccination, etc. So we uh, try to address it in a 30, 360 uh, view. So addressing the global issue, responding and being a responsible member of international community, being responsible for our own community, making sure that our healthcare system is resilient and our economy can uh, uh, stand on the face of, of this crisis. Sheikh Mohammed, how does the pandemic, in your assessment, impact uh, the big event next year in Qatar, the FIFA World Cup? All of our, you know, in, in India, we are uh, very great fans of sports, of, of especially football. And next year is a big year. How are you planning to host that uh, event uh, in the uh, wake of this uh, pandemic? Well, uh, actually, uh, you know, when, when the pandemic started, everyone expected that 2021, this will be uh, over and we will have all the events will come back to normal. But yet we are still facing some variants from, uh, uh, from this uh, COVID virus that made it a bit challenging. Uh, in Qatar, uh, we uh, from the beginning, we wanted to make sure that even with the pandemic is, is ongoing, how can we host a successful World Cup with, with a physical presence so the people can attend and can enjoy the event. And also, I think this is a great opportunity for the world when it will be the first happy event that will take place after this pandemic and isolation. So Qatar is, is, is well prepared to demonstrate for the world that uh, we can host such an event and we can uh, have it uh, hopefully in, in, in person. And this is this is our plan actually from from the beginning. Uh, so uh, since that time, we, we've been like negotiating and talking to uh, uh, the vaccination providers, how we can make sure that everyone attending the World Cup is, is vaccinated. So right now there are programs uh, under development uh, to provide uh, vaccination for all the attendees of, of the World Cup and we will be able hopefully uh, to host it uh, as, as a COVID free uh, event uh, by 2022. And we hope that also, uh, you know, globally the pandemic will uh, will start to go down and, and will start to disappear, hopefully. Sheikh Mohammed, uh, besides being the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister, you are also the Chairman of the Qatar Investment Authority. Um, you make key decisions around where uh, the future of the economy is. Uh, you also are a Chairman of the Development Fund and you work with communities. Uh, Qatar has always bucked the trend. You've always been a little ahead of the curve. Uh, despite being a, a, a economy that was built on uh, the old industrial cycles. Um, you have been future thinking in terms of climate change, modern technologies, uh, creating new solutions for the future. Uh, how is Qatar and how is the investments and the development fund that you manage uh, reorienting this part of the world to the uh, uh, to a green economy and a green agenda? Well, uh, if we are, if we are going to look at you know uh, Qatar main pillars in the economy, uh, one of them or the main one is is the LNG, and if you compare the LNG to the other traditional you know uh, fossil fuel uh, energy source, it is uh, the cleanest among them. So. Uh, even it's participating in the transition from uh, the coal or from the crude oil to uh, to a totally green energy because of of uh, the carbon footprint that it produced is very is uh, is the is the minimum. So uh, this is this is one of the tools that we are using in uh, making the world a better place for uh, for the people and also leading. Uh, to the objective of, of uh, the climate change in order to uh, have a resilient, uh, you know, uh, economy and the resilient uh, countries against all those uh, factors that that are coming out of the climate change. Uh, yet we are doing uh, a lot of other things, uh, participating, you know, through, for example, Qatar Fund for Development, in uh, supporting the countries which are in need and they are highly impacted by the climate change, especially the small islands. So, for example, His Highness the Emir uh, has pledged in 2019 100 million US dollar for small islands and, and small countries that are affected uh, by, uh, by the climate change. 
Uh, also, in in uh, in Qatar Investment Authority, we are very much focused on on the climate, uh, on the impact investment. As uh, as the QIA is part of the One Planet uh, initiative, as well, so to use the sovereign wealth fund uh, funding from uh, uh, to to face the difficulties of of the climate change in having an impact investment. And uh, we have demonstrated in, in several areas, uh, some of our investments, that making sure that it will, uh, you know, make uh, those countries able to, to, face those, uh, to, to face these challenges. One of the examples actually in India, uh, one of the investments that we are uh, very happy about is, is uh, the investment in, in one of the power companies that uh, uh, we have uh, bought a stake in, in, in that company in order to make sure that uh, uh, this these funds will be used for uh, transforming uh, the coal uh, plants to uh, gas plants and hopefully and to renewables. Uh, so uh, we have made uh, as as a commitment with uh, that uh, power company, which is part of, of Adani Group, uh, in order to have it in 2030 a coal free company uh, so uh, and this was the main purpose of of that investment another uh, initiative that we are looking at is is in africa uh, more than 10 countries uh, we are investing in partnership with with one of uh, our partners in europe in building a new uh, green power plants all from renewables like uh, wind uh, power or uh, also uh, a solar power. Uh, another one is also through uh, one of the companies that uh, QIA is investing in, is mainly focusing on the renewable and we are doing uh, some projects in Latin America and in United States as well. So there is, uh, there is a, a, a very big focus, uh, whether it's domestically, by building, for example, you know, Qatar is is uh, is an uh, is a is a country that its economy relying a lot on on uh, on the LNG. Yet we are building a very large uh, solar uh, plants for to generate our own uh, power. We have built also uh, one of the largest uh, carbon storage in in uh, in the region. Uh, as well as uh, FIFA World Cup, we believe it will be an opportunity uh, where it will be the first uh, carbon neutral uh, world event uh, in 2022 will be hosted in Doha. So all these commitments uh, are always, you know, at the center of our agenda. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed, uh, I wanted to continue with this conversation, but you know, today morning when you wake up, you read the news about Afghanistan. So I had to, for the benefit of the audience, ask you a question on what is your assessment of what is happening there? Are we closer to resolution or do we seem to be in a space where resolution never is quite within the grasp of the region? Well, uh, first of all, I think uh, to put it in the right context, you know, Afghanistan, uh, the war that we are working uh, at, you know, having uh, a deal on and, and resolve it is a 40 years war. It's not uh, something like, uh, you know, very new or it's not only about the US uh, and the allies forces versus uh, the Taliban. Uh, our aim from the beginning when we started uh, hosting these talks between Taliban and the US and now between Taliban and the Afghan government uh, is to uh, really bring peace for, for uh, Afghanistan as an entire country and to have a sustainable uh, peace. And we knew from the beginning that will be very challenging and we will have a lot of obstacles. Uh, so we are prepared for uh, any obstacles that might uh, happen. Uh, honestly, when uh, we looked at the last period after the U.S. signed the agreement with Taliban, we have been through some turbulence uh, uh, between the parties uh, in, the, in the negotiations. Uh, right now, it's becoming uh, it's becoming very challenging uh, because of uh, the announcement of the withdrawal and the withdrawal due date actually in the agreement is uh, 1st of May, yet we didn't have much progress on, on the inter-Afghan uh, peace, which is uh, uh, the cornerstone for any peace in, in, in the future. Uh, 
uh, we are looking forward to uh, host uh, an event with the United Nations, Turkey and United Nations and Qatar uh, in Istanbul, uh, hopefully in, in the next two weeks to bring all the Afghan parties in order to uh, push this process uh, forward. Uh, but we it's still remaining uncertain. Uh, we are continuing uh, our discussion with the Taliban and with the Afghan government in order to reach uh, a deal of reduction in violence, at least in order to provide the uh, right environment and the right climate for the negotiations between them. Uh, we are not there yet, but hopefully in the coming few days we can achieve something similar. So best of uh, luck to you on this particular project. I think uh, two uh, parties, if they are genuinely interested in creating sustainable peace, um, that is something that must be lauded. And I think that is in also in some ways the big uh, uh, question as we uh, move forward in this particular process. Uh, on, on, on a different note, uh, I, I know you have a hard stop and I barely have a few minutes left with you. Let me ask you, if I was to uh, pull out a question and ask uh, Sheikh Mohammed, what are the three, four, five big areas that India and Qatar must work together on in this next decade? Next 10 years, what are the big five, four, three areas that you are most excited about? How can we develop and deepen our partnership beyond the Doha Forum and the Raisina Dialogue and some investments? What is the large framework that should become our obsession? Well, uh, I think first of all is uh, that there is a strong foundation for, uh, you know, for for most of the areas that uh, the two countries have have a common goal in. Uh, I would start with uh, cooperating on on the energy and and the power uh, sector, uh, which is going which is going to tick a lot of the boxes. Uh, along with them will be the climate change. Okay. Uh, second is uh, the reciprocal investments between the two countries. Uh, we have uh, significant Indian investment in Qatar and Qatar has significant investment in, in, uh, in India. And uh, these are something uh, which is uh, ongoing, but yet in Qatar, uh, we have made in, in the last uh, three years actually uh, a lot, uh, you know, uh, accelerated uh, progress in, 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 uh, in that front. Uh, the third area, I believe, which is very important and still uh, uh, not exploited very much is the area of education, where India has a very strong uh, education system and Qatar also serves as, as a hub for education in, in the region with different uh, universities from a different part of the world. I think uh, this is one of the potential area where our leadership, both countries leadership are are focusing on. And uh, I would put the fourth area is really the trilateral cooperation where where are the areas uh, you know of, of common interest between Qatar and India and, uh, and we can create a partnership in order to work on, on those areas to help countries to support them, uh, for example, in, in, in facing uh, the challenges, especially, you know, uh, with the expertise that India has in, in uh, you know, in, in its region uh, or in, in certain uh, technical sectors and with Qatar expertise in international development and implementing a global project, I think this is will, will provide, you know, a unique opportunity for both of us. And uh, the fifth area, uh, I think, you know, uh, is very important, which is something also ongoing. Uh, you know, India is, is part of our region. Uh, that's what we consider. Uh, we have connectivity uh, with India. It's very uh, close and very proximate. And anything that's happening in our region or happening in your region is impacting uh, both countries. So I believe uh, the continuous cooperation and cons political consultation between the two countries is, is very important. And Qatar, as a small country, sometimes have uh, different opportunities in demonstrating, uh, uh, you know, uh, using its good offices for mediation, etc. And India, with its presence and its position in its region, also have uh, this power. And I think, you know, uh, leveraging those two powers is very important for the security and the stability of our region. Sheikh Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us at the Raisina Dialogue. I think. Uh, 
your closing uh, vision uh, for our partnership is something which is heartening. It's close to my heart. I think a knowledge partnership based on education and other institutions, uh, energy transitions and, and climate change, investments in each other's economy, working together in different parts of the world, and of course, maintaining close political consultations is uh, exactly what will define the Arabian Sea community in this particular century and Qatar and India must be part of that Arabian Sea community. Thank you so much for joining us from all of us at the Raisina Dialogue and I look forward to receiving you in India next year, sir. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Samir, for hosting me. It's really a pleasure to be here with you today.